Hey everyone, I am Alyssa Morrow with Rave Home Staging and Vintage Bee Design, and today I am working with Jamie Ray Vintage in a collaboration. I'll have a link to the collaboration below in the description, so be sure to check out all of the videos. There are some amazing artists that you won't want to miss out on. For my project today, I had this buffet that had been sitting in the store and not sold, and I'm going to transform it, uh, adding some extra special details so that it has a better chance in selling and catching someone's eye. I have a bunch of techniques to show you, so let's get started. First things first, I had these doors, there are three panels, and I wanted to add some interest. I decided to use the silk screen stencils by Redesign with Prima because they fit this area perfectly. And while I am really good at the other stencils, this stencil is great for a beginner who gets frustrated with bleed and so on and so forth. So this, it's really much more of a silk screen where you're gonna use a, um, I'm using a spread pal by Prima. And basically I'm just forcing paint with this little squeegee through the mesh and when you pull it off it comes out perfect pretty much every single time these are reusable and we have them in quite a few different patterns and did you know that stencil brushes aren't just for stenciling in this case i am going to use jrv one and a quarter inch brush and i'm using it as a dry brush the round stiffness makes it perfect for a dry brush where you aren't really looking for the lines, you're looking for more of a color and blend in it. And here I'm just going around the edges. I'm actually gonna fill up most of this whole panel, sort of making that center panel um, really special and standing out. It's gonna frame it, if you will. I'll cover the entire door and then we'll move on to the next step. I have a lot of viewers who ask me to keep the longer version of me doing the techniques in the video. If you want to fast forward, it's okay. I have chapters marked and you can feel free to skip ahead, but this is in here for those who want to see the whole process. It's hard to show the technique while you're holding the camera, but in this case, what I'm trying to show you is basically the importance when you are doing the dry brushing is to have a really dry brush. You're gonna dip your brush in the paint and then you're gonna wipe most of it off before you bring it to the furniture. Now we're gonna repeat the process, but with a different color, and we're not gonna fill the entire piece. This is gonna be really more about highlighting certain areas. And while we're gonna cover this up with yet a third color, you will see both colors through the final process. I'm ready to start my third coat of dry brushing and in this case I want a little bit looser of a brush because I'm going to be adding a lot more paint. Uh, this is still a dry brush but it is a wetter technique in that I'm going to be spreading a lot more paint. I've got to cover most of the surface of this entire dresser. You can see right here, I'm actually taking a little more paint off my brush because I didn't like that smear.
Here's a good look at what the finished product looks like. Tell me, was it worth doing all of that work to get this look? Uh, do you like it better than the solid blue that it was before? Let me know in the comments. And here I forgot to record me adding transfers to this piece. So here's some footage of a previous time when I added transfers. They're really easy to use. It's basically lay it down on your piece, scrape it with a stick and pull the paper off and this is what you get. Here are the transfers I added to this boho piece. Next up, I'm gonna give it a nice coat of wax. My favorite is the Clear Wax with, by DIY Paint and I'm gonna apply it liberally. I want a good solid coverage. The next day, I'll come back and buff it. I've decided to add a crosshatch dry brush technique on the top because I think it plays really well with the florals on the base. So here I'm using a one inch round brush by Zebra. It's got some good flexibility. And again, my brush is very dry. I don't worry about the darker streaks because in the end, I'm gonna do this over the entire top about four or five times. And I'm gonna go both in a horizontal and vertical pattern, creating the cross hatching. This takes a little bit of time, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. Again, this is super dry. Um, so I'm not wiping it off in this case, but I am making sure that I'm not putting any pressure on the bristles. I just want it to scoop over. When I do add any pressure, you can quickly see it does leave a mark. And in the end, it's okay. It all comes out beautifully. The drawers in this piece were super basic, so I have done a base paint of sawmill gravy, and now I'm adding the new decoupage mat by Prima, and I'm just gonna lay it all over this drawer. Then I'm gonna go back with my Radiant Eucalyptus paper, which is stunning. It is another new pattern by Redesign with Prima, and I'm gonna use a spatula and just sort of press it nice and smooth. Prima's decoupage paper really feels more like a fabric, which makes it super pliable and you don't have to worry about it tearing on you. In the end, when I'm ready, I will use the new Comfort Blade by Prima and use my spatula to hold it up to the edge and cut it right across. This is quick and easy and what a great way to make a really bold statement inside your piece so that when it's open, it is just as beautiful as when it's closed. To make sure this buffet can hold up to whatever you throw at it, I am gonna use a clear flat coat by Dixie Belle. I am gonna use my blue sponge that is a little bit wet and run it across the top. This is quick and easy and streak free, which is my favorite thing. I'll add about four coats when the, before this is done. And with all that, I'm not about to skim on the details, so I'm making sure I paint the sides of the drawers as well. Let's take a quick remembrance of what it looked like before we started painting and what it looks like after. Tell me, do you like the change? Let me know in the comments below. And if you love what we've done here, please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and share with your friends. And don't forget to check out the collaboration with all of the other amazing artists in this JRV collab. Uh, I hope that I will see you again soon. In the meantime, enjoy the close-up looks at this piece. I'm really happy with how it came out. Since moment